Eugene's Amtrak station is a comfortable place to await the coast starlight. Aboard the train, we pass unremarkable neighborhoods as the train heads east to cross the Cascade Mountains. Eugene and Sister City Springfield make up the third most populous metro area in Oregon. Eugene was once known as the lumber capital of the U.S. Today its fame comes from fast runners and the shoes they wear. Eugene is home of the Oregon Ducks. It's an active community made possible by lots of green spaces, including this trail-laced park along the Willamette River. Two important rivers come together at Eugene. The Mackenzie River, a fast-moving wild river popular with rafters, and the Willamette River. Here, the water from the Mackenzie becomes part of the Willamette, a river that grows as it winds its way northward to the Columbia. Oh, we're getting closer and closer to the river. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's pretty darn full. Willamette River, running high. Any higher would be in a boat. All right, folks, I'm ready now. 515, those of you holding up, 515, dinner reservation, please make your way to the dining car. As always, step just inside the vestibule doors and allow a uniform staff to receive you, please. 515, dinner reservation. Also, folks, on that note, you now notice that I'm a little bit behind. So please wait for me to call your time. Don't proceed to the dining car until your time is called. If I can make up some time, I'll try to make up some time and get us back on track. If not, we'll just keep on rolling throughout the night. Thank you. What do you want to do? The Oregon countryside. We have not gone far. I'm not going far. We cross the Willamette River here, and we're soon seeing the Lookout Point Reservoir. The scenery was enchanting, but we were also losing daylight. Soon, darkness would fall. Hey. hey. <laughs> we're looking at the ships. Those ships are surplus warcraft, mostly from World War II. They've been moored here since the end of the war just in case we need them again. They're called the Mothball Fleet. They look a little bit ghostly sitting out there in the gray water. We're past Sacramento. After a brief stop in Martinez, we continue southbound, watching the urban landscape from the parlor car. This is the parlor car. It's a nice thing. You have to pack it in and again, yeah. to the interior. So that would have come for it. Oh, this is Liz. This is the foot of the Bay Bridge uh, going into San Francisco. So you think you have it, but yeah. I mean you can just think about it. This must be where they take the containers off the ships and put them on railroad cars. And look at all those big old cranes. I bet that's what they do with those. Look at all the containers. <laughs> this is Jack London Square, and it's really been developed a lot over the years. Nice place to come to. If you can get through the neighborhoods to get here. Sea salt, anyone? This is where Morton gets its salt from the seawater. You can see the white product being piled up here after settling out in these evaporation ponds. The color is from an algae that apparently likes very salty water. 
The Spanish word for salt is sal, and we rolled through the Salinas Valley, America's salad bowl. A lot of produce is grown here. Writer John Steinbeck grew up in this agricultural area. This is a trail that goes right along the railroad tracks. Not far from Salinas, we skirt the edge of Elkhorn Slough, an estuary set aside for wildlife. We visited the slough in 2009, seeing sea otters, seals, sea lions, and many other animals. Robles is the Spanish word for oak trees. As we ease through Paso Robles, the pass, not the town, enjoy the quiet, accented with train whistles. We'll see you again in part three. Thank you.